This song's kind of funny. Hear that random? Woo! Hi everybody, my name is Butternuts and welcome back to Everlasting Summer. Here we are at the very beginning of day four, right where we left off. Are you guys ready? Let's get this started. I woke up with a hellish ringing inside my head. The ringing seemed to be coming from the depths of my consciousness. But after I came to my senses, I realized that the cause of this ringing is my alarm clock. Strange, where did it come from? Why is it standing near my bed? It was past half seven according to the clock. Olga had already left and there was nobody to force me to go to the, li go to the lineup. Thus, I can sleep a bit more. I closed my eyes, but seemed like consciousness had already had its coffee and was ready for a long, productive day. I need to get up. I should plan my day out. After all, I need to at least find out something today. But still, nothing came to my head. Fine, I need to wake up completely and wash myself. On my way to the wash stands, I met Xenia. What got you up so early? Anything wrong with being up early? She looked at me as if I insulted her. No, nothing, just curious. She's probably mad because we didn't go to the library. We were supposed to go up for lunch. None of your business. Gosh, Zinya isn't very sympathetic, even when she's in a good mood. But today she just looked furious. The cold water perked me up. The fog in my head dissipated and my thoughts started arranging themselves. Curiously, I started to worry about finding a good place in the canteen, more than about finding answers. I brushed my teeth and was going to leave when a quiet sound wafted past my ears. It's probably a squirrel or some other animal. I heard another sound, this time a bit farther. I walked ten meters along the path, searched for the source. Nobody, just the morning forest. Ah, oh, it's Miku. I returned to the washstand and saw Miku, who was looking through something in the grass. For something in the grass. Noticing me, she smiled and jumped up to me. Oh, hello, good morning. I accidentally scattered my tooth powder, just trying to gather it all back up. The dewy grass didn't seem to be helping the matters. Are you sure that's a good idea? Well, why? What else can I do? I don't have any more. It was the last I had. She pouted like a child, who had just had her favorite toy taken from her. Here, I'll give you mine. I dug into my bag. New tooth powder there. Hmm. Strange, didn't I just put it there? I walked away from just a minute, now it's gone. Listen, it looks like I have forgotten it. I didn't want to tell her that it had just gone missing. Knowing the sensitivity of this girl, it was safe to assume that vanishing household goods would impress her so much that her brain would reset itself in order to avoid overheating. Wow. Well, I'll be off. Yeah, cheers. Visit us. I mean, visit me in the music club. I'm still alone there, but we, I mean, I... And I left. Getting back to the leader's cabin, I took my cell phone and looked at the battery meter. Enough power for a day, maybe even less. Of course, it won't help me much in here, but still. Finding a charger in the 80s would mean inventing it. I was going to head for breakfast when somebody knocked, knocked the door. It was Lena. Mm, good morning. Yeah, good morning. I was taken aback a bit. The events of the previous day were still fresh in my memory, but I didn't really want to speak about them. You are probably looking for Olga, aren't you? Well, no. I mean, yes. Lena was her usual self, shy and easily embarrassed. That dance on the pier, now it seemed no more than a dream. She's not here, I'm sorry. Okay then, I'll go. Okay. When Lena left, I thought that I had been too cold towards her, so I decided to be nicer on our next encounter. Still, regardless, the morning was shining and beautiful. The bright sun was shining over the space and time displaced Pioneer Camp Savionok warming its residents and filling, filling them with energy to spend the day's productivity. Or in my case, to waste it in futile efforts to find an explanation for everything else happening here. <clears throat> there was an unusual large crowd near the canteen. Of course, there was no other place in the camp that pioneers loved as much as the canteen, but why were they all crowding on the porch? I came closer to find out what was going on. 
It looked like that all the camp had gathered to the. It looks as if all. It looked like. The all the camp. Okay, had gathered at the porch. There were all the familiar girls, Olga and Electronic. They were having a lively discussion. I drew closer. Ah, Simeon, have you seen Sherrick today? Nope, what's the matter? We haven't been able to find him since early morning. Disappearing pioneers, well that's something new. But he was with you yesterday. She was talking to Electronic. Yes, he was. So you woke up this morning and he wasn't anywhere to be found? No. Why didn't you come to me immediately? Well, I thought that he got up earlier and went to wash up or something. Did he mention anything yesterday? Interjected Slavia. For example, that he was going somewhere for instance. Nope. What exactly is so horrifying about that? It's only 9am, he might have decided to go for a walk. You don't know, sure. She looked over at me seriously. Well, no, I don't. But I didn't see anything suspicious in that situation. Okay, let's stop panicking. We'll find him. How could he miss breakfast? Ilyana grinned. Exactly. Time to eat anyway. The pioneers proceeded into the canteen. Yet again, I had no choice where to fit in. The only free places were a table around Elisa and Ilyana. Take a seat. She pointed at the chair next to her. I sat down. Alisa looked as usual, didn't seem like she was going to start a fight over me missing the performance I had promised to come see before. Oh, the... Well, if she doesn't feel like talking about it, then why would I? Aren't you going to get your food? Good idea. I hadn't thought about that. Today's breakfast didn't look much different from yesterday's, but it looked more appetizing. Or maybe I was just really hungry. Or maybe I was eager to finish it off as soon as possible to avoid yet another Ulyana prank. Want to go to the beach with us today? When? Right after breakfast. Generally speaking, relaxation wasn't on my agenda today, but if I was going to spend some time thinking, why shouldn't I do it while getting a suntan? Sure, why not? She smiled nicely. I bet you're planning another prank. No, not at all. Ulyana waved her hands at me. She sure is. Elisa grinned. She's always like that. No way. I think she's right. Nobody believes me. Olyana took a tray of dirty dishes and stood up. Enjoy your meal. She said in such a way which left no doubt nothing good awaits me today at the beach. Me and Elisa were left alone. You know, I guess I shouldn't go with you after all. Why is that? Well, I've got something to do. And what exactly would that be? She looked in my eyes and I couldn't even find an appropriate excuse. I don't even have a swimsuit. Try mine. You think it will fit me? Give it a try. I don't think it's worth the effort. Don't be a wimp. We'll find you some swimming trunks. These words only added to my fear. Wait for me by the canteen. I'll be back soon, okay? Oh. There's nothing wrong with waiting for her, is there? Ah, fuck. We all finished my breakfast. Pioneer, all having their own business, hurried past me one by one. No one stopped by me. No one even looked in my direction. It seemed they didn't consider me a stranger, but exactly the opposite. Just another teenager their age, their comrade, you could say. I caught myself thinking that I had started to consider this camp and its inhabitants with not as much caution as I had on the first day. Indeed, at least I was back in a couple of minutes. Ready? Ready for what? She gave me the trunks. Though you hardly could call them trunks, they looked like pink boxers decorated with butterflies and flowers. Actually, they were boxers. I'm almost afraid to ask, but where did you get these? Too scared to put them on? Well, you know. I have not the slightest intention of doing so. I appreciated her joke, but wasn't going to make myself a laughing stock. Put them on, she said roughly. Why don't you try them on instead of me? I think the color of the swimsuit would set off your eyes very nicely. Let's make a bet. I had no desire to accept her bets. No thanks. Alright, you either go to the beach wearing them, or you swim naked. Weighing the pros and cons, even the second option seemed better than the first. I'm not planning to go anywhere at all. Then I'll tell everyone that you left these trunks in my cabin. Why would I do that? How should I know? 
She burst into laughter. I didn't want to argue with Elisa, so I decided to go to the beach in the end. But not these flamboyant trunks. Okay, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Don't be late. She ran off after saying that. I dragged my feet to the- oh fuck, well, I went there. Olga was waiting for me in the room. Semyon, did you hear anything about Shurik? Same as half an hour ago. I walked to my bed and took a towel. Are you going somewhere? Yes, to the beach. Wait, do you have swimming trunks? You came here without any, any luggage as I recall. Strange the fact that- uh, Strange, that fact didn't seem to surprise her during our first encounter. No. So, what will you wear? Good question. What? I don't know. Wait a minute. She walked to the wardrobe and unlocked a drawer. In a moment, she had a pair of normal black trunks. Where did she get those? More importantly, why? Someone from the previous session might have forgotten them. Considering all the strange things in this camp, it wasn't really surprising to find men's swimming trunks in Olga's room. The trunks were just my size. I got changed behind the cabin and went to the beach. A lot of pioneers had already gathered there, but I recognized only Elisa and Oliana. Come here! I walked over to them and sat on the sand. I see you found something better. She stared at my trunks and smirked, as you can see. Come on, let's swim. I don't want to. Maybe later. I was not a fan of swimming. Suit yourself. The girls ran into the water. Why did I come here? Why am I not out looking for answers? Should I care about it now? Savinok seemed normal. Certainly a lot of strange things have happened to me during these three and a half days, but not one of them taken separately seemed all supernatural, especially since I didn't get any closer to finding so much as a clue. On the contrary, everything that has happened has only confused me more. What alternatives do I have? I won't get any truth from the local residents, though I doubt they even know it. Should I try to leave this place? But how far can I walk, considering that I don't even know where I am? It turns out that my only option is to wait. After some time, the girls came back. Oliana held something in her hands. Look! I looked up and saw a crayfish. Just a normal crayfish. Um... Okay. Oliana lay next Oliana lay next to me and started to torment it. Leave the poor animal alone. Why? Why it's just a crayfish. So what? It has a right to live too. I'll rip its claws off and ask to cook it. To cook uh, I'll ask the cook to boil it for dinner. As if we have nothing else to eat. I looked at Elisa. She seemed to be totally uninterested in Oliana's fun with the poor sea creature. Tell her? What's wrong? It's a crayfish. It deserves it. It looked like the girls missed their lesson on, na on nature in the primary school and lacked empathy for the environment. Give it. I snatched the crayfish off for Oliana. Suit yourself. I was a little surprised she didn't resist. I looked into the eyes of the poor animal. They didn't express anything at all, but I thought that if I could speak, it would certainly that if it could speak, it would certainly be outraged. Maybe it would even go to the UN Convention of Human Rights. Oh God! To tell the truth, I wasn't sure that would help. I took the crayfish to the river and set it free. Never mind. I'll catch more. There are plenty of them here," said Oliana. No doubt about it. Time passed, and I was getting sleepy. I fell asleep. I don't remember what I was dreaming about. If I was dreaming at all, but I woke up and someone shook my shoulder. Olga stood next to me. Did you come to swim too? I asked, still half asleep. No, it's almost time for lunch and we still can't find Shurik, the leader said, standing before me in a wet swimsuit. And I want you to look for him. It seems like I'm the only pioneer in this entire camp. I was sincerely outraged. Every time I was getting clearer that Olga could... Yeah, every time it was getting clearer that Olga considered me her errand boy to be used like a slave, or vice versa. If I came to you, then I want you to help me. Okay, fine. Why exactly me? However, after giving it some thought, I decided to agree. After all, my shoulders and back got sunburned while I was sleeping, 
and searching for Shurik would let me get acquainted with unexplored locations of the camp. Okay. I was not exactly right to wander around wearing only swim trunks, so I should get changed first. Ten minutes later, I stood outside Olga's cabin, deciding where to go. He's probably lost in the forest. Let's check there. It's not worth looking for Shurik in the canteen of the beach. Or in the cybernetics club. It was his second home. Or maybe even his first. Thus, it might be worth looking around the surrounding forest. I didn't plan to go far in the forest, otherwise it might be me who they'll be searching for tomorrow. I didn't really visit the countryside often. I just stayed in the country house every summer during my childhood, but that was one very close to the city. But in this camp, it was possible to find everything I hadn't seen for so long. Overwhelming vegetation, singing birds, and fresh air. I found a meadow and sat in a stump. How peaceful this place is. But where in the world is Shirt? Actually, he could have been taken against his will. The camp is far from normal, so Pioneer... You just said the camp is... Oh, whatever. So Pioneer disappearances should not be all that strange. An intriguing possibility could be the work of whichever force sent me here. Or is it just some separate local entity doing it? Lost in my own thoughts, I didn't notice how the grass before me started moving. I looked closely and saw a squirrel. It approached me carefully and stared at my hands. Probably used to getting it, getting fed here. Sorry friend, I don't have anything with me. Of course the squirrel could not understand me and continued to just sit there waiting for treats. I felt sorry for it because I didn't have any crumb of bread in my pocket. I realized that I'm even ashamed to look it in the eyes and decided to move on. After some more wandering, I came to watch the watch dance. Turns out that he is not in the forest either. At least not in the surrounding area. And going farther is just frightening. I walked to the watch dance, took off my shirt, and tried to wipe myself down because I was all sweaty. However, it wasn't so easy. I won't be able to get into the wash bowl and there isn't even a ladle. Suddenly, I heard footsteps from behind. I turned around. Electronic was walking my direction. Looking for Shuri? Yes. You too? You too. Listen, you know him better. Where could he have gone? I don't have a clue, he answered sadly. No, well, I just don't understand why everyone has made such a fuss. During the night, wasn't he in the cabin with you? Then he can't have been gone for too long. Maybe he went for a walk. You don't know, Shuri said Electronic excitedly. He is fanatically dedicated to his work. I swear to God. Electronic looks like he's gonna fucking bitch slap me. <laughs> his life consists of robotics and cybernetics. People like him are one in a million. No. In a billion. His talent is boundless. I look up to him. He is a man of steel. <laughs> oh, man. No. Simply triumphant. At that moment, he looked like Hitler making a speech in front of a crowd of thousands. Even his gestures matched. Okay, so what? So what? You don't understand, do you? No. He spent all of it, you see. All of his free time in our club. All. So disappearing just like that is unusual for him. Of course. Seems like Electronic calmed down. Okay. He looked at me intently. Are you going to wash? Not really. Just rinse off a little bit. It is hot. Me too. He looked around. I wish there was a bucket or a ladle. Something to get more water with. Yeah, I noticed already. Then let's do this. He walked behind wash stands and pulled on one of the tabs. To my surprise, its end turned up rather than pouring it into the wash bowl. The water splashed up almost 90 degrees. You could manage to wash yourself that way. Okay. See how many of these moments are gonna creep on me? Creep up on me. What the hell is wrong with your nipples, dude? <laughs> Meanwhile, Electronic took off his shirt and then squatted so it seemed like he pulled down his shoulders. I didn't really. He's obviously wearing pants. You can see his belt. I couldn't really tell because the washstand he was behind concealed him up to his waist. <laughs> He directed the steam towards himself and started to sing something quietly. Let's clean my chimney chimney. 
I'll wash myself and then let you use it. Gosh, I got such a massive chill. Well, you know, I just remembered that I have something to do. Gotta go. <laughs> hey, what's up with you? A cold shower on such a hot day is like the best thing ever. No, no, no. That won't do. And anyway, I have to, I have to go. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go to the boathouse. In the worst case, it finds his corpse, but I'm sure that it won't end up that way. I was crossing the square when somebody called out to me. Wait! Elisa came up and smiled. I immediately sensed a trap. Where are you going? I am searching for Shurik. Olga asked me to. And how is it? Exciting? She looked intently into my eyes, and I turned away awkwardly. Not really. But you know a pioneer is missing. Surely you're not freaking out over such a minor thing. What do you mean? Only a few hours have passed. Maybe he just lost track of time while having a walk. Certainly I'd had the same idea, but I wasn't telling her that. Yes, that's true. But who knows what could have happened. Let me help you with it. With what? I got suspicious. Was looking for Shirk. Oh, but I can do it. Oh, come on. She smiled at me, but there was something malevolent in that smile. Naturally, her smile was cute enough, but it really seemed to me like there was something behind it. Well, if you insist. Since I cannot under under blah, 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 understand what's on her mind, I had no real reason to refuse. But before we go, I have to get one thing from home. Okay, I'll wait for you. You're actually serious about just standing there? Let's go. Okay. We approached Elisa's cabin. It would be just like all other cabins, if not the Jolly Roger on the door. By the way, Ilyana is my roommate. Okay. We entered the cabin. The complete chaos inside really reminded me of my old flat. Though why I thought of it as old, in general I would imagine a girl's room differently. Snow white sheets, walls, floor and ceiling, shining, spotless. But when you consider that the two most exemplary, pioneer, exemplary pioneers are living here, we just stood silently for some time. And what did you need to get? Huh? Seemed like I interrupted Elisa's thinking. Yeah, it's not here actually. Wait here, I'll be back in a minute. She smiled and ran out. She seems really flaky today. I began to examine the room. I wouldn't say that there had been any explosion. It was just a decent mess. Well, at least by looking at all this mess created in one pioneer section, I could surely say that I'm not the messiest person in the world. The decoration on my apartment took years to be completed. I wasn't thinking about anything in particular, was just looking around the room. Posters of Soviet artists, some books on the shelves, various household items. And then I realized that everything is wrong. Something will happen soon. Something bad. Why did Elisa leave me here all alone? There was something I had to discover. What's with the music? I'm kinda digging it though. My gut told me that it's dangerous to stay here. I went to the door and tried to open it. Locked it. What a surprise. How did she manage to quietly lock me in? I don't know what's on her mind, but I did. I need to get out of here. I went to the window and opened it and climbed out. Now I can go take care of business, or... I chose the second option and waited. But there's a reason she had me locked up. I wanted to know what was happening. Plus, I really wanted to see Elisa's face when she finds her room empty. I hid in the bushes next to the house and waited. After some time, I heard footsteps. Alisa and Olga came to the house. You'll see everything for yourself. She opened the door and went in. A few seconds later, she ran back out. You know, I, Alisa's face looked as if she had just won the mouse catching competition, but at the last moment found out that it's not a real other base. Or... Um, okay. Why is she blonde in that picture? <laughs> this song's kinda funny. Hear that random? Woo! 
so he just disappeared. Olga asked skeptically. I did the right thing by closing the window after myself. No, you know, I understand everything. You and your roommate, every time, the same thing. I haven't, haven't you had enough yet? But it's true. Really, one story after another, Simeon in your cabin, Simeon harassing you. Why do you keep lying? That's horrible. Elisa seemed really upset and to my surprise was not trying to argue. On the one hand, it was funny to look at, but the other, I felt a bit sorry for her. She deserves it though. Our leader finally finished scolding her and left. Elisa was mad. She clenched her fist and trembled. Her face was flushed. It seemed to me that she was going to explode. I sat in the bushes and laughed quietly. However, I was wondering what was on her mind. I came out of my hiding place, not afraid to, of being beaten. So what exactly did you want to show the leader? Me? Alisa turned and looked at me with disbelief. After a moment, the surprise turned to anger. You. You. What about me? She calmed down a bit. Because you're a loser. And why is that? Because you're afraid to compete with me. When? When we played cards. What a serious reason. Yeah. Maybe I should apologize to you, I asked sarcastically. Screw you. And she left. I wasn't angry at Lisa. In the end, I expected her to do something like this. Anyway, I got through it without consequences. I was really lucky. I left at Lisa's cabin, and I guess I just went for lunch and mixed feelings with such accomplishment and with realization of time wasted. The canteen was crowded. I couldn't say unnoticed. Olga called me. Semyon, come with us. Okay. I nodded and went to go get my food. When I sat at the table and wished bon appetit to everyone, Olga said, So, what are you thinking? About what? We searched for sure all around. It's noon and he's nowhere to be found. I took a note of the rhyme but didn't want to point it out. We looked all over the camp. I went all around the neighboring forest. Olga looked at me. Die. Helped too. <laughs> we must call the police. Maybe we should wait until the evening. I asked lazily. Maybe he went home. That can't be. Sherik lives thousands of miles away. By train? The nearest station, she paused, is far off. Now it was getting interesting. Every time the conversation reached a point concerning ways, I could leave Slavi knock all the camp inhabitants started changing the subject. How far is far? Really far. The camp leader looked at me, indicating with her expression that then asking more questions was not advised. So we should go deeper into the forest. Maybe he got lost. Shurik always takes a compass, chimed in Electronic. I wonder what else could be found in the magic vest, assuming he has one. If I were to get lost in the forest, a compass would be of no real use. Police! We should call the police in the evening. Not right now, at least. Okay, so you'll do it later. They were all silent. We should be able to find him before evening. We still have time. If he actually got lost, we have no time to lose. We cannot be sure. Then where is he? Where? There was some truth to the camp leader's words. Hiding the whole day is just like that is suspicious. Why would he do that? Shurik seemed to me to be quite a serious pioneer. Olyana would have been a better fit for this behavior. So there is good reason to believe that he was gone. All that can be done already has been done. We'll just have to wait. Slavia, Electronic, and Olga looked at me sorrowfully but didn't say a word. I finished my lunch, the lunch, took the tray back, and left the canteen. It's still the first half of the day. What now? The camp was drifting off to for an afternoon nap. Only Jenda stared at me through his glasses. Of course, he was staring somewhere else, but I had the feeling that he was constantly watching me. I bet he knows where Shurik is hiding. He just can't say anything. The disappearance of the cybernetics club leader made me think. Maybe it's got something to do with my case. Oh, Pioneer! The nurse stood in front of me. I looked at her curiously. Go and take my place in the infirmary. I have an urgent call. Somebody is injured. Me? Yes, you. Take the keys. Well, I guess I have no choice now.
The nurse threw me the keys and ran away. Why me? Isn't there anyone else in the camp? Seriously, why do I always have to do everything? Jesus Christ. On the one hand, there is nothing to worry about. I'll spend half an hour or so here and she'll be back. But what if someone comes for actual help with a broken leg or head injury? I began to worry too much. I hope that there are no injuries more serious than bruises and scratches in this camp. But at the same time, I could not shake the idea that in a serious situation, I would be absolutely useless. I don't even know how to perform. I don't even know how to perform CPR. A magazine on the nurse's table caught my attention. A good way to relax, I guess. This is labeled Soviet fashion. Okay. Well, it's been half the day, I guess. So I think this is a good place to leave it off. I really hope you guys are enjoying it so far, and I will see you guys in the next video, leaving it off here in the infirmary. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Butternut.